Hey everybody, um, I want to share another sort of dream that I had um, on March 30th, um, the same morning that I had the dream about the confirmation of the three days of darkness. Um, I waited to share this one because it was more complicated. It was really like a bunch of pieces of dreams that I'm going to just say is one dream. But, um, so I wrote, it wrote it down because there's a lot to it. And I also prayed about it a lot. And the Lord gave me a lot of, um, understanding about it. And he also gave me some scriptures. So I'm going to try to stick to my notes pretty well with this. But, um, so the first part of the dream, I was behind the scenes in an old, a very old, um, theater. This was not like a movie theater. This was a theater for putting on plays. And, um, the theater where I was, I was in the back, like behind the scenes and there was people, it was like, it was like the end of the show. It was like people were, um, just walking around and they were doing whatever they needed to do. And there was an old elevator there, like a really old elevator. And it, um, could take you up or down. If it went down, it went below the platform. And if it went up, it went obviously above the platform. And, um, so there was like a bridge, I think up there and stuff that, um, people would go up to. Um, I've never actually been in a place like this. I've just seen it maybe in like movies. So this was, you know, I don't have a lot of details about how it all works, but, um, okay. So there was a man standing in front of the elevator and I recognized the man from actually a movie that I saw quite a while ago. Um, now the movie was called what if, and, um, the man that was in my dream that was also in this movie was a man who played as an angel in, um, in that movie. So, so this man that I recognized from the movie was standing in front of the elevator and he was asking people, would they like to accept Jesus Christ as their savior? Well, I remember particularly there was a guy that was trying to get onto the elevator to go wherever he needed to go. And, um, the man stopped him and said, would you like to receive Jesus? Would you like to accept Jesus and believe in him? And he said, no, thanks. You know, he was not interested. And so the guy got out of his way and he got on the elevator and he went straight down. And I remember being like, whoa, cause it kind of, he kind of like abruptly just went down and drew my attention to that. And, um, that was the end of the first part of the dream. Now, to me, that's pretty, um, that's pretty clear. Parts of it are very obvious what it means. Um, but what the Lord showed me was a little bit more. He said the old theater represents the, the world. And the show is coming to an end. We're in the end days. And we, we have a final moment coming soon when it will be our last chance to receive salvation or not. Will we go up or will we go down? All right, the next part of the dream that I remember was I was a part of another play. I was not a part. I wasn't a part of a play in the first part, but I was, I was in the second part of the dream, I was on a platform of an auditorium and I recognize this place. Um, it's in a lot of my dreams. It's a, a church that I went to. I also um, went to school there for a while. So, um, excuse me, something in my eye. Um, but this this is a, a a Christian school and church there. So, um, the 
I guess there was a bunch of like teenagers putting on a play and so they were in the auditorium I was there and I was a teenager in the dream and I was at the back left of the um, of the platform and I remember in the dream thinking I was really relieved that I didn't have um, a part to play where I had to like memorize a lot so um, I was more of like a silent part and but I got to see um, what was going on again just kind of like how I got to observe in the first part of the dream well as the play was going on um, there was all these lights shining on us and then the pews that were out, you know, where, where all the friends and family were, we couldn't see them very good because it was so dark over there, but we had all the lights on us. And I remember as the play was going on, there was a, a, a teenager, I can't remember if it was a, a guy or a girl, to be honest with you, but there was a person in front of me who um, was speaking their part and they went off script. They all of a sudden started saying something different. They started, um, <laughs> they started saying things that were kind of controversial to, it had nothing to do with the play even. It was like, uh, I don't want to say it incorrectly. So, but it was like something that was like, um, something the church doesn't like to talk about, you know, like something that would be very controversial in the world today. And there was like a couple, I, I remember this very clearly, there was a couple of kids that like, as soon as he went, that this person went off script, the other two in the front, like I remember their heads like whipping around and looking at the guy and, and saying to him or her, I think it might've been a him anyway, they were saying to him, you know, like, what are you doing? They were whispering and like, what are you doing? Why are you going off the script? You're not supposed to say that. That's not part of this. What are you doing? Shush, you know, like, and the person didn't, the person got louder about it. And it ended up in everybody else getting really mad at him and an argument ensued and the whole play completely fell apart. And, um, the whole thing was shut down and the, um, the play was over and everybody was dismissed, like just to leave. The whole thing fell apart. And, um, stick to my notes. I'm sorry. I'm already straying away from them. Um, the Lord showed me that, that two types of, these were two types of theater. The one, the old one, the first one was of the world and the second one was the theater of the church. So two theaters. The kid who said something off script was attacked for what he said. Why? Because it rivaled what was in the script. I think this has many applications, but what was placed on my heart is that there is deceit. There is deceit in the world, but there is also deceit in the modern church. So many are being told what to say, how to live, how to act, how to act. And when they break free from that mold, it often gets rejected. I grew up in Baptist churches, very strict, very opinionated, and very much like a theater. Well, why would I say that? Why would I say it's like a theater? It's often, unfortunately, about making money and playing the part and just filling up the pews for the show on every Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And I also want to add in there something that the Lord said um, in my spirit. He was telling me, you know, it's like the people can sometimes be viewed as tickets. Tickets, they're money, they're money signs. And it's all about that and about paying the bills and about um, 
giving retirement for the pastor and giving retirement for the assistant pastor and the youth pastor and all these things. And it's often, there's so much concern about making money and getting the view, the pews filled that the important things that need to be taught, that need to be preached, that need to be made aware of and, sh and honestly shared with the community around are often hushed. We don't talk about that anymore. We don't want to talk about it anymore. It's all an act. The power of the Holy Spirit is stripped away and we're left with something dry. We're left with something half true, not completely true. And I'm not gonna, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna move on. Um, the next scene, um, so after the crazy play, all it, it all fell apart, I was in a room um, gathering up my things I guess I had changed out of my costume or something and um, and all of the other girls they had already left except one one other girl and she was getting ready to leave also she was she was ahead of me she um, was just I think and when I, I think when I remember she was just like picking up her bag and she was walking out the the room that we had used as like a dressing room and um, so I finished what I was doing, feeling kind of like, okay, I'm the last one in the room, you know? So I walked out of the room and all of the lights had been turned off. All of the lights in the auditorium were turned off. And I remember saying out loud in the dream, wow, why am I always the last one out? And the entire place was dark. Everyone had gone outside. And so I went out the exit to the parking lot, um, my dad was there, <clears throat> and a, just a few others were left, but pretty much everybody else had left already with their families, and it was dark outside, um, and um, as we were walking through the parking lot, suddenly in the dream, I realized it's no longer dark, everything kind of just shifted, it's, it's very weird how this worked. Um, it was no longer dark. It was bright outside. The parking lot had completely disappeared. The church was still behind me. The church was still there. So that's very interesting to note that even though everything else had changed, the church was still behind me that I was walking away from. And, um, the ground had completely changed. And it was, um... Okay, to try to explain what I was seeing, um, it was a drastic uh, geographical like change. Um, like something big had happened there. Um, instead of it being like normal looking ground, it was it was like some big kind of event had happened and the earth's crust had moved in a crazy way where um i don't know if it would have been like an earthquake or what i don't i don't exactly know but i have i mean i have my assumptions but i don't know for sure but um there there was big parts of the ground that had just heaved up and there was like chunks that were like at a diagonal um angle like that had just come up out of the ground and then they were like folded over and then there was like more that had come out of the ground and folded over. And then there was like big hills that were around that didn't used to be there. And there was just some that were really big and jagged uh, rocks coming out of the ground. And then some that were like covered over with moss. And so it was on grass and stuff like where they had used to be flat. Now they were like just this chunk of rocky, grassy earth like sticking up. And I remember thinking like just in amazement, like, wow, this is insane. And then and then I also was thinking like, wow, this is beautiful <laughs> in a weird way. It was like just gorgeous. And there was another lady who had the same idea as me, like, 
we're gonna, I want to take a picture of this. So I pulled my phone out and was taking pictures. And there was also like this, um, this really low fog or mist in certain areas. And it just, it was just very interesting. Um, but I remember kind of like walking up one of those slopes that had like stuck up out of the ground. I kind of walked up one. And when I got to the top of it, my dad was with me. He was with me walking around. And um, when I got to the top of it, I realized <laughs> I could now see that there was this massive hole in the ground. I mean, to describe how big the hole was, like a high school team soccer or football field or something, but it wasn't, it wasn't rectangular. It was, it was circular and, um, it was really deep. And, uh, that was pretty cool to witness and interesting to see. But when I looked down into the hole, I saw further down in the hole was this, there was something in there. It was like, um, how to describe this there was like something circular down there something in like a spherical shape that it was so big whatever was in this hole sitting in this hole was so big that you couldn't see the sides of the sphere and you couldn't see the bottom of the sphere you could only see the top rounded area of the sphere which was still huge because this is a huge hole, um, and the, what it looked like, what the sphere looked like, it was like um, tan colored and brown colored and even maybe a little bit gray colored, and it was in, um, it was like when you see videos of videos or, or pictures of planets that have like dust storms on them, um, how it's like they kind of separate in color tones and they're like, they have like these kind of swoopy edges on them and you can just imagine like these dust storms going around something kind of like, um, like a planet would have, you know, and um, but it was, that's what it looked like, these like bands of storm type things around it. And, um, now the rest of the, it's not going to make any sense until I explain this to you. Um, <laughs> but my dad and I were looking at it in just amazement. And my dad said, I want to use my notes to quote this correctly. Um, Oh, and I also want to say that this big orb, this big spherical thing, it was, it was moving like this, like rotating on like forward like this, like it was just going like, or, or whatever. It was just like constantly moving and it was going really fast. Like I couldn't move my hands that fast. Like it, it's just really going quick and it had this like like this uh, roaring noise, this rumbling, roaring noise to it. Like it was alive. There was an energy going on there. And uh, so what my dad said was, I said then my dad said that the news reports were saying that Saturn had crashed there and, and that the Saturn planet was stable for now, but one day soon, it's going to explode. That was the end of the dream. Now, now you can see why I did not share that with you right away. Because it sounds nuts. It sounds like I ate too much, like ice cream before bed or something. <laughs> um, but that's not the case. And um, so, I was thinking about this, like the, the first parts of the dream totally make sense. The Lord gave me answers to that pretty quickly. But that last part, 
it was such a vivid dream and it was connected to the other dreams. And um, so obviously there was a reason for this. And so the Lord said, look up Saturn. Because, well, first of all, the planet didn't even look like Saturn. The planet looked more like, what, like Jupiter or something than Saturn. And so it didn't, it, even that didn't make sense. And obviously Saturn isn't going to be in, like, crashing inside the Earth. That's, that's just not, that's not right. So, um, I was just like, okay, obviously this is very symbolical. So what do we do with that? We look up the meaning. What does that mean? Why would he say Saturn? So, okay, I look, I looked up Saturn and, uh, I was blown away. I was totally blown away with what I read. That Saturn, the, the name Saturn comes from the ancient Roman false god, of course. Um, and he is the god of wealth in agriculture and a god of plenty, of liberation, and time. But when I hear the, uh, when I saw that, I was just like, whoa, that totally makes sense. That makes sense. The god of wealth and agriculture and plenty. Well, think about our country, which we know in scripture, our country is Babylon. We, we are Babylon. And this is something that we are all about wealth and plenty in agriculture, right? I mean, that's a, a lot of that is starting to shift now, but that's what we've been known for all this time. Americans um, in general are full of idolatry and immorality and um, don't think they need God. And uh, so that totally makes sense. And the saying, the thing that my dad said when he said, um, let me look here, that Saturn, okay, the report, the news reports were saying that Saturn crashed there. Think about that. Saturn crashed there. The god of wealth and agriculture and plenty crashed there. And that the Saturn planet was stable for now, the wealth and agriculture is stable for now, but one day soon, it is going to explode. So it's all going to end. And I also find it very interesting that even though the scene had completely changed, the church still remained in the background. It was still there. Um, it was there to show that there is judgment coming to the church. I've known that for a while. My dreams have depicted that over and over and over. That one dream that I shared, the dream that changed my life when I saw the sword over the church. By the way, it was the same church in that dream that was in this dream. It represents, it's not just that church, it's it's the type of church. It's the it's the people of the church. It's the the sickness of that church, the evil, how Satan has worked his way through those churches for all these years. And God is God is such a good God and he is trying to wake people up. All right. When I was looking up Saturn, I also saw what the symbolic meaning of Saturn is. So that is what Saturn kind of came from about the, the false god, but it also symbolizes a sickle. And by the way, um, the scripture for um, Babylon, if you want to look and see how Babylon is just so extremely connected biblically to this false god of wealth and agriculture and plenty, then I suggest that you go to, I think I wrote it down, um, Revelation chapter 18 talks about um, the fall of Babylon. So if you want to check that out, I think that you should. 
but when I saw that Saturn um, is is a symbolic of a sickle, I was like, whoa, whoa, like if that already wasn't confirmation enough before, this is like triple confirmation here that the, <laughs> that, um, that Saturn is, is the sickle and and I put down the scripture that the Lord immediately popped in my head it was Revelation chapter 14 verses 14 through 20 and I did copy that down in my notes so I will read it this is the amplified version and you can read whatever version that you feel you want to read but this is the amplified version starting in verse 14 it says again I looked and this is what I saw a white cloud and sitting on the cloud was one, so one, this person who they call one is a capital O. I believe it's talking about Jesus. It says, so they saw the white cloud. Sitting on the cloud was the one, Jesus, like the Son of Man, <clears throat> with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle of swift judgment in his hand and that's just okay like just picture that for a moment picture Jesus sitting on a cloud with a golden crown on his head and he's he's holding that sickle of swift judgment in his hand I mean that's just interesting to think about um, but it goes on to say in verse 15 it says and another angel came out of the temple calling with a loud voice to him to Jesus who was sitting on the cloud and said put in your sickle and reap at once for the hour to reap in judgment has arrived because the earth's harvest is fully ripened all right so we had another angel come out and say to Jesus it's time to reap um, okay um, so he who was sitting on the cloud cast his sickle over the earth and the earth was reaped it was judged all right so Jesus reaped he judged the earth then another angel came out of the temple sanctuary in heaven and he also had he also had a sharp sickle so this is not Jesus anymore this is a different this is an angel with a with another sickle and then, and then a third and another angel came from the altar the one who has the power over fire and he called with a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle saying put in your sharp sickle and reap the clusters of grapes from the vine of the earth because her grapes are ripe for judgment so the angel swung his sickle to the earth and threw the grapes into the grape and to the great wine press of the wrath and indignation of God as judgment of the rebellious world. Um, and the last verse says, And the grapes in the wine press were trampled and crushed outside the city, and blood poured from the wine press, reaching up to the horses' bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia, which is about 200 miles. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty profound, and I think the Lord is trying to say through all of this that things are coming to a close. This is it. We are at the end. This is it. And things are coming to a close. The show is ending. It's over. And there's a lot of ways that it could be taken. But, um, when I shared this all with my husband, I was just so blown away and so ecstatic about how the Lord had revealed this meaning to this really strange dream to me. And he was like, a sickle? When I told him about the sickle, he's like, well, uh, isn't the sickle on, let me, hold on one second. Um, sorry about that. I had to check something. But anyway, um, he he was like blown away about the sickle part. And, and he um, brought to my attention that the Soviet Union flag uh, has a sickle. So anyway, um, as I always say, take everything to the Lord for confirmation and mean it when you say it. Um, 
because I know this is a long video, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope you all have a great night, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.